Gary Johnson and pre Mansfield away. Gary, let's start with the draw first to the second round of the AFL Cup. Newcastle away. Um, yeah. What a draw. Yeah, it's a, like, a lovely draw. Um, it's one of those teams that you get excited about um, to be drawn against them. And uh, Is there still fog on the game? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we don't mind because um, it's a fantastic stadium. They got fantastic support up there. And uh, just listening to the lads coming in this morning, they're excited by that draw and they're really, really looking forward to it. Is the chairman excited as well? I mean, could it mean actually a bonus uh, windfall for the club? Well, I'm, I'm sure the chairman will be excited by this sort of draw. I mean, not only from a football point of view, as he's a football man, but um, of course from the financial side of it. Um, you know, if I start having a go at uh, Rafa, and getting their crowd all upset, we might get 50,000 <laughs> looking and hope their team will beat us, but uh, I haven't got that sort of personality. So um, I don't know how many they'll get, 20, 25, 30,000 or whatever it is, but um, either way, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good draw for both on and off the pitch. And the challenges keep coming. First away game this Saturday at Mansfield. How do you get the players to just keep rising to those successive challenges? Yeah, well, it's we, we've got a real busy schedule in the next few weeks, and we just spoke to Paul Goffrey, our secretary, about all the travelling we've got to do. You know, we've got to go to Blackpool, Plymouth, Newcastle. Um, we've got to uh, well, she we're away at Mansfield, so we we got some a lot, a lot of travelling to do. So. You know, if there's an airline pilot out there that's a Cheltenham supporter that's got 50 seat plane, then that'd be handy, please. Could he make contact with us? <laughs> uh, and uh, so that'd be good if we could get sort out the travelling. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a busy old period. It really is a busy period. And one of the interesting bits, of course, uh, is that um, Bristol City play Newcastle on the Saturday before we play them on a Tuesday. So I've rung Lee and I've asked him to knock them about a bit. <laughs> um, and uh, so that'd be interesting because, of course, it's handy that we're scouting them anyway, uh, in Bristol, and my brother's not got too far to go. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good good one all round. And I mean, just looking at Mansfield's games so far, plenty of goals in them, I think, what, nine goals in, in two games that they've been involved in so pretty open by the looks of it yeah I mean there, there isn't going to be a, an easy game you look at Luton last night you know they looked a strong force when they played Aston Villa um, Mansfield got a really good result at Newport there seems to be a lot of goals in our division at the moment so strikers are, strikers are obviously getting the uh, uh, there's some good strikers out there scoring goals so um, we've got to be careful of every team and until you've got to Christmas time when you've played more than half the team, certainly most of them probably by that time, at least once, you sort of know then which teams are going to be there or thereabouts. So at the moment we've got to treat everybody with uh, respect and we will do at Mansfield. But we're coming off the back of a one and a half good performances out of two and, uh, and looking forward to always looking forward to the next game at the minute which is which is nice some teams because they might have had a couple of dodgy results they might not be looking forward to the next game but at the moment we are if you can't get a plane you're living on the coach at the moment how much time is there in between the matches for training and doing the work that you want to do out there on the training paddock yeah not a lot of time of course because it's all spent in traveling up there and then traveling back that's all wasted day as well because it's a lot of these games, uh, away at Blackpool, away at, uh, away at Carlisle and away at Newcastle, are all Tuesdays. So we don't get back till the middle of the night, sort of four or five o'clock the following day, which also yeah. cuts your day out for any, any work. So um, it's good that we've been doing a lot of work over the last couple of weeks. And uh, so I think we've, and it's also good that we've found our game because half the point about training is getting the players to buy into the game, see it, believe it, do it. Well, we've sort of seen it, 
believed it and done it already so that's nice so um, we've done that quite early so that would be that's a positive and Solomon and Griffiths settling in after what is now a full week that I've had with the club so actually you know, they'll be up to speed in that sense as well yeah they will um, and I, I saw by both their reactions and chats that they have with you they're immediately into our psyche which is good and into our uh, the way we think um, and our philosophy that's uh, important as well and and both enjoying it um, that's a good thing and we're keeping in touch with both Everton and Ashton Villa they've been watching the two lads as well so <coughs> they know they've got to impress their own people as well as us and uh, it's working out well at the moment early days I don't know if you know this but Back in 1999. I know everything. What's that? Sorry. Right. Well, you'll know then, back in 1999, oh, yeah. Cheltenham, their first win in the Football League was away at Mansfield, their first away game. It'd be nice if you could get the symmetry going yeah. again. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought <laughs> so, you knew everything. Yeah, I thought I did as well. Um, well, you know, it, football's got a funny way of sort of bringing up these idiosyncrasies sort of thing. And, Here's another one, but as long as I don't ask my lads the same question and I don't think it'll bother them, <laughs> um, we'll just go into the game, it's another game, um, and uh, I won't tell them about the history, it's about the here and now and, and the future. Go out of that one then. Well done. Uh, Squad wise, anyone coming back from the injury list? Anyone sort of, hopefully not anyone new on it? No, I think a few of them have got a, a week or so left yet, so there won't be any anybody new yet. Um, on the pitch or on the bench, I, I, I may um, change one, two, or three. You know, the three pros that have come on, they they haven't done anything wrong that were on the bench against Charlton. I took liberties with them really because I don't really like doing that. But we we saw out the last sort of five minutes with our substitutions. Even though I put them all on at the same time, I didn't want to really take liberties with everyone and and do it every ten seconds in, in the last. But um, because I didn't want to break it up for us, because we were still going okay at the time. Um, so, yeah, there's there's 14 players plus the three young lads that are getting experience at the moment, and uh, that that we'll be selecting from. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Tuesday night, you said the midfield absolutely dominated the game. How pleasing is that, given Munns, Stora, Dayton, and Hall on on in the end? Yeah, well, it's, so, well, it's very pleasing because it means that. Um, I mean, they they more or less played a three in there anyway against our two, and I thought Pelly and uh, Danny Whitehead were, were fantastic on the day. But I also thought, and this is where you get the numerical advantage, Billy Walters on the right and uh, Moore's on the left, I thought they worked their socks off, both of them. And, then, and both of them, their preferred position is obviously up front. So the, the, the mentality to put in that work rate was terrific really and I, I thought both of them played well as well they both got back in because they had to um, Charlton liked to have lots and lots of passes but we created more opportunities and obviously scored the one that we needed to score to make it 1-0 so um, I thought we, had, we we won a lot of ball in that middle third Not it's not just the midfielders it's that middle third and that was our Defenders as well, winning headers and etc. And um, and everybody played their part in keeping a nice compact unit that was competitive. How pleasing was a clean sheet then for the uh, for the new back five as it were. As yeah, well. very very pleasing. Um, I think they had one stat show one shot on target, so in open play. So that's good. That, you know, I mean, I can get upset about the one shot, but that'd be <laughs> over the top really. Um, and, the, and I think the goalkeeper dealt with it. I can't remember what, exactly what happened to it. But um, so we know that you know, our, our shape looked good against the team that was three leagues ahead of us last season when we were in the conference and, and they were in the uh, championship. The away games at the end of last season, you changed the, the, the team around a bit just to get you on the, on the front. But is that something you're likely to repeat this season, or is it a case of? That, that team almost picks itself after that. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll judge it. I mean, I obviously uh, part party to more information than you people. I know the ones that have got little knocks or got a little problem at home or, or something. You know that are not quite up for it on the day. 
and you have to sometimes make little changes. Um, sometimes you have to rest somebody because um, a couple of the lads would not have played Saturday, Tuesday, Saturdays this competitively before. So you have to look at all, all those things. So it's not an actual uh, policy that I use that I'm going to change. So there's got to be a reason for it. And if there's, if there's no reason and everybody's okay and it's going well, then you know, don't change something that's broke sometimes. Ask the, uh, the, the it's two not players. Broke. It's yeah. not broke. <laughs> Ask the two players this after the Tuesday game. It is all that's missing to make this a really good start to the season just a league win there? given the two performances and the yeah, two games. Yeah, well, it's still early. We've only played one league game yeah. and, and that was against one of the favourites, so we, we're, we're happy. Don't try and drag me down yet. <laughs> um, I was trying to be positive. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, um, so, yeah, it's, it's the f sooner you get your first win, the three points becomes massive because you don't want the, even on a point, if you don't get your three points next game, then you, you're chasing a little bit the teams that might have won twice. Suddenly, if you get beat, you're five points behind after two games. You know? So we've got to make sure that um, you know, we're, we're in there battling. So every point now is, is very, very big. Must be good to hear win. Harry Pell talk about two points a game and being bang on, bang on target. That message stuck from last season. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> I mean, they all, they all talk our game. And it's a, it's a language that when you start hearing the older players obviously that have been here longest, we know that they talk like that. And but we need when I hear the new players using our phrases and sayings and, and uh, talking with that sort of confidence that they know what they're doing, then um, I know we've got through to them. And, uh, we've talked about it before and it's a form of brainwashing, yeah. hypnotism. Are they still allowed <laughs> to call each other champ? No, no, I don't <laughs> think they call each other champ anymore. It's um they might do, you know, when they're in their, each other's houses when they're out of the club. But no, no, that's calmed down now. We've got a job to do now and you know, we can't be champs forever. You know, you've got to be careful that you're not champs. Just got to win it again then, it'd be champs. Yeah, that'd be good, yeah. Well, they've had the feeling, so if they've had the feeling of that winning, then that's, that's always good. And I'm always pleased to give lads that feeling of winning a long, hard championship because they know what goes into it now and what they've got to do again to do the same. Excellent. Thank you.